Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Hope you got your coffee if you drink coffee. If you don't drink coffee, that's fine too. But it's absolutely beautiful day here in Indiana. I just got out of the car. I drove back from Nashville. I was there for eight nights. Got some good interviews, hung out, saw some friends. Had a good time, but I just drove back and got out of the car and I thought, I'm gonna talk to the people, you know. I'm gonna have to spend some time with Amy right after this. Uh, but um, she's like, go ahead, go ahead and get it out of the way, talk to the people. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do it. But um, a couple things I wanna talk about. But first, I, um, I saw Kenny Vaughn a couple days ago and we had a little, little chat and he was saying that um, every single gig that he plays, like with Marty, uh, every single gig, multiple people come up to him and talk about they saw him here on the channel and how much they enjoy it. And I just want you to know, thank you very much. That means a lot to me when you guys are going up to people that you saw on this channel and say that you enjoyed it and they know it's worth it. You know, they know that people appreciate it and you actually come out to a gig and all of that. So thank you very much. That made me feel really good. I've had a lot of people say that kind of stuff. Maybe you can tell me down below, who did you see on the channel that you later got to go to the gig and maybe even meet or whatever. But um, tell me who those people are. I'd love to hear it. A little ch chat that Kenny and I were having a talk. One thing he brought up, which was really interesting to me, we're talking about drummers. And he said something to the effect of, um, remember back when drummers, a lot of drummers would have their own sound, how it was really common for drummers to have their own sound, you know, their own thing where you would know who it was. And um, they used as examples, um, I believe he used Levon Helm was the first one that he brought up, uh, Charlie Watts, and um, I don't know, Mick Fleetwood, who if I had to make, you know, if you had to make a list of who my favorite drummers are, I really like Mick Fleetwood. He does this really simplistic thing and I'm a minimalist, but it's always so mu musical and it is always, always in support of the song, which, you know, I think is everything. But uh, he used him, he said Mitch Mitchell. Um, uh, Bill Bruford, who are some of the people that he mentioned? I don't remember who all he mentioned, but I would throw in there Jim Keltner, you know. And then as time went on, people like Phil Collins, Neil Peart, um, Stuart Copeland, although I think those, I'm not diminishing it, those are all great drummers with very distinct styles and personalities, but um, I think it's a little easier to stand out when you're the drummer who plays a lot and like of a technical sense or whatever. But for the people like uh, Mick Fleetwood or Charlie Watts or whatever to stand out that way, that's something. And um, it just so happened, I told Kenny this, the day before we had this conversation, I was in a, a recording session and um, the drummer was playing something and I wasn't completely feeling it and uh, I said something to my buddy Tom Utes and um, and I said man you know maybe we can do something a little bit different there it's not really it seemed like the right feel Tom reached down to the talk back button and said to the drummer more leave on and the drummer knew exactly what he meant he changed the kick drum pattern and it was absolutely perfect and uh that's one, it's a testament to that drummer to be able to, you know, to do that. But just imagine if you had such an identifiable style, a thing that you did, that someone could just mention your first name and the drummer would know, you know, drummers all across the world would know, oh, I need to do this, more like this. That's a hell of a testament to you having a style. Someone could say, you know, I'm thinking more like Charlie Watts. And, um, you know, the, the drummer would think, okay, the first thing that probably come to mind would be, 
don't play the downbeats on the hi-hat and uh, you know something like that and uh, I've actually said before when I was having trouble um, recording a song I'm not gonna say who or what the song was I don't think I've ever said it before there was a drummer on one of my albums and I was having a hard time getting the right feel and I was just thinking it's and it's on me because when you have musicians in and you're doing something, you need to be able to communicate what you want because that's all they want to do is what you want. If it's like a session player, it's easier for everybody if they just like, well, what do you want? And then they do it. You know, they try to like make the best out of that world. And um, I just was thinking about it, like, what am I trying to say? And and I said, um, what, like Mick Fleetwood. And I, the drummer's like, oh, okay. And I did it. It was absolutely perfect. Like the next take, with, after I said Mick Fleetwood, is the one that's on the record. And I'm very happy with it to this day. But um, I, I don't know all the drummers out there. You know, there's probably a whole world of drummers I don't know about. But it seems like there aren't as many identifiable drummers like with a... A particular style you know where you could hear them and go oh yeah that's Mitch Mitchell you know that's Levon Helm and um, I don't know I think one thing maybe those people back then learned in a more isolated you know situation they weren't on the internet and learning what people were doing worldwide they knew what was happening in their circle and maybe they would things outside of it would kind of bleed in maybe they did some things which i personally believe this um some of those things that you do quote wrong end up becoming a very important part of your style and make you stand out where you get good but you don't soften certain edges because you maybe you don't know any better or you just never worked on that but it ends up being an identifiable piece of your vocabulary and um, I'm trying to say that in the most positive way because I think it is or, but if you were in a if you were in some kind of a school environment they might try to get you to stop doing that but that thing that you're doing just might be your thing and um, you got to get good you got to get real good a lot of people have their little hiccups and they're not very good and they're like, that's my thing. And that doesn't really work then. But if you're really freaking good, you know. I don't know. What do you think? Who are drummers that I'm not thinking of? Who are actually the modern drummers that I've just never heard? And, um, and I'm going to say, let's leave out the technical people. Like the people that are, because that stands out quicker. Who are the, the backbone people that really, you know, are saying something? Because you don't think of a like Charlie Watts you know, or Mick Fleetwood, or Levon Helm as being the the flashy, you know, gonna do a big, you don't think of him like Neil Peart, you know, but I, and I'm not dissing that either. I'm not like putting that down, but uh, I really love those people who play in service of the song and still bring something of their own to it. Because it makes everything elevate when it's done successfully. So uh, tell me the drummers that I'm not thinking of, even from back when, the great jazz drummers, you know. But I also, I asked, uh, I've been asking people in my Patreon area, area and my channel members if they would ask me some questions and I will try to answer those the best I can. And we've been doing that. It's been going well. A question that keeps popping up that's kind of curious to me. Um, people were saying that there are websites out there where you can find out someone's net uh, worth, their wealth, and it's usually some big celebrity or something. Supposedly, I'm listed on some of those, and which is amazing to me. And people were telling me that I'm worth anywhere from $3.1 million to $11 million. And when I heard that, I was just like, what? What? You know, and I've heard it from a few folks, so I figured it'd be funny to address it. I can assure you, I am not worth anywhere near $3 million or whatever. 
Have you ever been to one of my shows? Like, are people paying two hundred thousand dollars a piece to get in, or you know, it's um, I don't know if you're familiar what folk singer salaries are like, but um, you know, a lot of the people that do what I do, and even some of them with really uh, much higher profiles than me, will. The people in the audience, I would say most of the people in the audience probably live in nicer houses than the performers that they're paying to see. And they probably make more money a year than the people that are on stage. And um, so it's for people to start getting into the $3 million, let alone $11 million net worth, that takes a little bit more than, you know, I'd love to find out, I'd love to find out that you know, Amy's extremely frugal. Maybe she's been, you know, keep finding coins underneath the uh, underneath the chair and the couch cushions and all of that, and she's been burying them out back in a you know bunch of coffee cans or something over the years, and then maybe she's put them into some kind of a re retirement thing or I don't know some kind of crypto, and it turned into 3.1 million. I would love to find that out. But it's not happening. You know, I don't know where the money would have come from to begin with. But um, I thought that was funny. Also, I, I looked at one of them, and it's amazing how wrong things are on the internet. It said that I lived in a different state that I've never lived in. It said that I was born in a state that I've never lived in, um, like a different one. I forget what it was. It said I had um, like three or four kids. I've n I don't have kids. I never had kids. Um, I think it said I was divorced. It just had all of this stuff that was just way wrong. It listed bands that I'd been in. It like uh, listed a couple of my albums, and I've, the titles were completely wrong. They weren't the titles of any of my songs. I don't know. It's just like people just made something up and put it on there and then people search for it and they see it and they're like, wow, this person is worth $3 million. You know, didn't know they were doing that well. And um, I don't know, it's funny to me because it doesn't mean anything, but there are things that do mean things that are important and that's not as funny. So. Um, I figured I would throw that out there to answer that so we could put that to rest. But um, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to go say hey to Amy. And um, you know, it's been a long week. And then I'm going to go out here in the backyard and start digging up some holes trying to find those coffee cans full of money. See if they're there somewhere. And um, tell me down below who you've seen live that you saw on this channel. And uh, if you met them, that'd be even extra points. And tell me the drummers that I'm not thinking about that have their own unique style. And I'll see you guys somewhere down the road. Much love to you.